so it is a bit cloudy but it doesn't really matter today because today we are going to film inside the Israel Museum Shalom everyone welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger and this time I'm super excited to have finally obtained the permit yes to get all the clearance to film inside the Israel Museum and share with you the very specific items that relate to the series of following Jesus in Jerusalem and this time artifacts archaeological discoveries that are so closely related to Jesus to the New Testament let's go in so the Israel Museum is from the 1960s and around the year 2000 it was shut down for a major um, upgrade a facelift if you wish part of it not so much appreciated today maybe is this shaded roof part in August just the walk up to the entry can be so exhausting and then here you enter an inner space which was a big surprise not only is it covered air conditioned but look how modern it is so yes being an archaeologist my main interest will be of course archaeology and in this series we're going to review the specific items relating to my series of following Jesus in Jerusalem but besides these items and archaeology in general the museum offers a whole world of objects artifacts not just uh, of the local heritage of Israel but also international art and so on but here already you have a bit of archaeology in this case a mosaic floor from Bet She'an Nises Kitopolis right next to it a late 19th century sculpture of Rodin but we are here today for a different purpose so let's move on wow this is really instagramic this passageway <laughs> and the golf carting is not part of the presentation <laughs> the golf cart is part of a service so even if this passage is difficult you can use the service to get to the main entrance it is still required to wear masks indoors so I have one just over my chin in case someone gets upset I'll have to cover my face but it looks like no one really cares anymore looks like the pandemic is over till the next variant <laughs> a beautiful 20th century modern artwork reflected well in the floor again distracting us from the main purpose why we are here But the stairway now leads to the main entrance the main junction where you can choose if to go to the gift shop <laughs> and the museum does produce a good selection of replicas of its items as well as literature I do highly recommend here I'm doing a bit of pro marketing for the museum it does have a good selection of books and artifacts based on their display but we are here for the archaeological section which is on your left the main junction I must add and I will do a proper series about the treasures of the Israel Museum this is not the purpose this time but since I was giving this rare access I do feel obliged to thank you in this little semi camouflage marketing way okay Israeli and international art there even pre-Columbian art and so on a whole world Judaica light uh, wing is over here worth a whole big review by itself and the archaeological section here we go look at this Byzantine era stone coming from an ancient synagogue thanking and blessing the visitor also today 
ברוך אתה בבואך, ברוך אתה בצאתך. Bless when you enter, bless when you leave. Canaanite era, anthropomorphic coffins greet you as you enter. And the archaeological wing in general is set up in a chronological order from prehistory and up to the Ottoman period. Again, I will be more than happy to give a review. In fact, I'm plotting to interview the chief curator of the classical wing, uh, Dudi Mevorach, who is now actually excavating a very, very interesting site that also relates to Christianity. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 23, a non which is near Shalem. Uh, so when he will be back from the excavations, we will plot how to do this with a little walk and talk with him, as well as Dr. Chaim Gitler, a dear friend from many years ago. We both shared the passion for ancient coins. We were both students of the high priests of ancient coins in this region, uh, Professor Yaakov Mishorer, but that will be done on a different time. We are now focused on a very specific topic, and these are items that relate to Jesus. And here is the beginning of it. Here you have an exhibition of a bizarre burial custom that the Jews have developed around the time of Jesus. Archaeologically, we're talking about a time frame from the time of Herod and up to the Roman destruction of Jerusalem. The Jews who survived it uh, we're now more focused in the Galilee, the, the time frame of the formation of the Mishnah, later the Talmud, and then they changed the burial custom. But around the time of Jesus, we see for the first time, first of all, coffins, stone coffins, which were actually extremely rare. They're almost like royal level. And indeed, the tomb complex of Herod found in Herodium did contain a coffin. It's actually here on display as well. Yes, it was found in fragments and only about 50% of it were found. But here it is, reassembled, presented to the public with parts of the mausoleum which were found all in pieces on the side of Herodium. The reason it is in pieces is because it was apparently deliberately smashed by the Jewish rebels who hated him so much. Yes, not only did he kill all the babies in Bethlehem when Jesus is born, he was a cruel ruler of the Jewish province. In fact, his biggest cruelty was to his own family members. He killed his dear wife. He loved her to death. <laughs> and two of his children, which he feared that they were plotting against him, and there's a famous anecdote that when Augustus, the emperor, who had heard that his vassal king in Judea is killing his own children, he commented that it seems that it's better to be Herod's pig than Herod's son. You have a better chance of staying alive. <laughs> Interesting Roman black humor, which also attests to the fact that Herod probably kept kosher. That is an interesting note. But we are again being distracted. The focus is the burial custom that develop and the royalty and semi-royalty, the high priest perhaps, could afford and were buried in stone coffins. But the majority, including even, even high priests, as I'm going to show you, and, and definitely down to the middle class, they buried their dead in this bizarre, smaller stone coffins. They are known as ossuaries or gloskama in Hebrew and Mishnaic Hebrew. And it's obviously too small to put the, the body inside. So it was really used for secondary use. It was used after the meat decays. All that's left are bones. The Mishnah tells us that the family members would come a year later, collect the bones, and put them in this small bon bone box, which sometimes can be extremely small, like this piece. So it was probably for a baby. Okay, and others would be for adults. 
Most of them are very simple, lacking any ornamentation. Here's an example I will return to. Some of them are pretty nicely ornate. And notice this interesting theme, this interesting repeated subject of the flower, six palettes flower. It's called a rosetta. Why do they keep repeating it again and again? Here is a variation of it. Well, the official answer is je ne sais pas. <laughs> we don't really know. We don't have a Jewish source explaining it in a proper way. But it, it did seem to be a, like the, the Star of David. It even kind of reminds us of the Star of David, having these six points. And maybe appearing both in art, when I will finally review you know, sites relating to Jesus in the Galilee, you will see it appearing even in a, in a synagogue. And, and, it, and it does appear in a few mediums of Jewish art. So maybe it's a reflection of the cycle of life. The cycle of life from life to death. And maybe this is how we should review this. But we don't have a proper answer to this. Now, in some rare cases, not only was it found... Uh, with decorations, but even with a name. <laughs> and we have over 6,000 known stone coffins. This one is here on prime display, because if you can read Hebrew, it says here, Yeshua bar Yehosef. <laughs> Jesus, son of Joseph. Oh my God. What are you saying? That this is the ossuary? Of Jesus? Of course it cannot be, especially if you follow the, uh, you know, the writings of the New Testament where he rose from the dead three days, days later. He could not have stayed in the tomb, decomposed, and then the family would collect it. But it is an interesting fact that you have this name. And the answer is very simple. Both the name Yeshua, and by the way, it seems that they first wrote here Yeshu, you, there are two ways to pronounce Jesus in Hebrew and Aramaic. Yeshu, Yeshua. Apparently they realized it not enough space, so they then wrote it here. But he, here's the thing. But Jesus was actually a very common name. There was even a high priest named Jesus, Yeshua. I think Josephus mentions about 23 uh, figures by that name. And so was Yosef. And, and so was, or variations of it, like Yosei. And so is uh, Yehuda, Matitya, Yohanan. These names that you're so familiar with from the New Testament were actually the most common names. But this is here on display because of this very interesting combination. And this one also nicely ornate, star of uh, the, the Rosetta, that specific star. And we also have a name here. And here the name is Judah, son of Yeshua. Judah, son of Jesus. This actually is the very ossuary found in the Talpiot tomb. This is one of the ossuaries found in the tomb that today is all covered up by cement, but uh, the Canadian producer, Simcha Jakovici, made a whole fuss over this one and the others, suggesting that Jesus uh, had a family tomb uh, south of Jerusalem, and he even had a son, and here he is. <laughs> now, I've reviewed that site and that subject. Of course, it, it doesn't hold water. Okay, it's, it's just a wild, entertaining speculation, in my opinion. But I won't go into detail again about this. Just review my previous chapter. We are here to see solid, proper archaeological discoveries that relate so boldly to Jesus. And the first guy is... This one. This is an ossuary that is obviously of a middle class minus. It's a very simple one. But they did care to write the name. Yehohanan, son of Chagekol. John, son of Chagekol. Rings a bell? I also never have heard of him. The reason that this ossuary became so famous for Christian studies is because inside they found the bones. This was one in 1968, right, right after the Six Day War, when excavations were conducted north of Jerusalem in the area known today as the French Hill. Now there's a highway where that 
K was found. And the big fuss over this specific discovery is because among others, in the bones, they found the heel bone. You see it? With a nail going through it. This is the heel bone of a poor guy whose name was Yohanan, son of Chagakol, who committed sudden crime that the Romans got really upset about, and they put him to death in the most humiliating, agonizing, painful way that the Romans were famous for, crucifixion. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, then be aware of the fact that they even found some pieces of wood between the heel and the edge of the nail. Yes, Yohanan died on the cross. There's no doubt about it. Here is a suggestion of how the leg part was uh, tied to the side of the cross. Uh, they also found the arm part, and some suggest that being broken, it's because it was nailed. But one thing that scholars tend to agree today that he he was not crucified in the you know the way Jesus is displayed in conservative Christian art. He was tied over the horizontal beam because actually if you just nailed the palm of the hand, the weight of the body could cause it all to tear and the body will just fall. <laughs> it's all very gruesome TMI, but that's what the physicians uh, suggest. Yes, yeah, so if we have archaeological evidence for the end of Yohohanan we can speculate the similar position also for the end of the earthly life of Jesus. And it's important to understand that people were crucified by the kilo, as you could say. The Romans crucified many, many people. The Spartacus uh, rebellion ended with mass crucifixion of the slaves, and so was the fate of the Jews who were captured by the Romans. Jesus himself was crucified with two figures, two thieves next to him. Why don't we find more evidence of crucifixion? Should really be the question. And the answer is because that piece of metal going through the heel is valuable. It was probably recycled. It was simply taken out. The question should be asked, why wasn't this piece taken out? And the answer is possibly, I'm trying to get the right angle to show this. Hold on, hold on, tilting this way, there. Now you can see the bent in the nail. It seems that the family members taking the body off, even if they realize that nail could be then sold and worth much, it was bent and it would tear the flesh even more and the person suffered enough. The idea in Jewish burial is to bury the body in as complete as possible, so they spared him, at least on this nail. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, until recently, this was the, presented as the only archaeological evidence ever, ever found to crucifixion in the whole Roman Empire, because they used to recycle the nails again and again. But now we have, I just read of another discovery made of another very similar heel pierced by a nail found in England. So we have two. This is still 50% of the archaeological index for crucifixion in Roman times. Okay, item number one that relates so tangibly to the description of the crucifixion of Jesus. But this is not the one that I wanted to present in the sequence of following Jesus in Jerusalem. Yes, the sequence of following Jesus in Jerusalem, the previous chapter, ended with the presentation of where the coffin, the, the not coffin, the ossuary, yes, the mini coffin of the high priest that questioned Jesus was found. Kayafa. Kayafa is his name as appears in the New Testament. But Josephus and the archaeological evidence tells us that Caiapha was really like his family name. His first name was Yehosef. And again, 1990s, construction down south of Jerusalem in a site whose Christian name, listen to this, is Mount of Evil Council. 
by Christian tradition, this was the plot indeed of the high priest. And then this item comes from a burial cave proving that this was indeed a plot of Kayafa because this is one of a few uh, ossuaries found in that specific cave. In my previous chapter I showed you the, the green pipeline that is the only marker left of the existence of the discovery of that cave. And this guy is undoubtedly of high status. Okay, look at the artwork done over here. You can compare it to another smaller coffin that is also here on display, which even says also Kayafa, but it's pretty small. We assume it's a child member of the family. Okay, this one is highly ornate, and the finds inside contain the bones of an elder a person, a male in his 60s. And look at this. Yehosef Bar Kaifa. <laughs> Joseph of the Kayafa family. And I'll try to see if I can squeeze. Because also here you're supposed to see a graffiti of his name. I just don't want to push my luck too much with the guards here. <laughs> but people, we are looking in the most likely hood at the actual bone box of the high priest that sent the priest to capture Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, then summoned the Sanhedrin, interrogated him, questioned him, and eventually handed him over to the governor, Pilatus, Pontius Pilatus, who sentenced him to death by crucifixion. Okay? And if this is not exciting enough for you, how about finding an inscription to mention the judge of Jesus? And we have that too. There it is. This item, people, was found in Caesarea in the 1960s. It was in secondary use as part of the theater of Caesarea. And it was originally a first century inscription that can easily be dated to the 30s because it is marking the erection of a Tiberium. Tiberium, meaning a building for Tiberius. Tiberius was the emperor in the time of Jesus as an adult. And the person erecting this monument to honor his boss is a local governor whose name is something Us Pilatus. You see it? The word Pilatus is very very clear so the us is undoubtedly Pontius Pilatus okay this part was later chiseled off and if you still have any doubts there are traces of his title Perfectus Judea and then maybe the year I'm not sure about it nor am I sure where is a Tiberium it may have been in the area of the theater there is actually a candidate for its location not far from What's labeled is Herod's palace. But look at all of these items now combined. Here is the person who captured Jesus. Here is the person who judged Jesus. And here is a person who died like Jesus. The Holy Trinity of the Israel Museum when it comes to Christianity. Isn't that spectacular? And isn't that spectacular that Dudi and Chaim agreed that I would do this little mini session, no flash, they barely agreed for the microphone, no, no photos of any figures, I tried my best to avoid any faces of any visitors, just to have this quiet little session to reflect on the most significant archaeological artifacts that relate to Jesus. Wow, mission accomplished. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I do thank you all the visitors, all the viewers, all the commentators, all the like markers, the subscribers, the supporters. Your support is highly, highly appreciated. And until next time, thank you all and Shalom from Jerusalem.